So the battle for the best bang for the buck graphics card continues as AMD is dropping no less than 5 new graphics cards very very soon. In this video we're going to talk about everything you need to know about them and basically some general tips and ideas to have in mind before picking up a new graphics card in late 2019, early 2020 and we're starting right now. Alright so I wanted to make this video and talk a bit about all the things that is happening right now and hopefully by the end of this video help guide you in the right direction. Graphics card plays such an important role for the gaming experience and so picking the right one is vital as gaming nowadays are getting more and more GPU bound which makes the GPU choice so important. You don't want to pick the wrong one so that you end up disappointed with stutter and low frame rate as a result. With that said it seems like WCCTF Tech has been digging quite deeper because they got a ton of information on AMD's new RX Radeon. Now we obviously need to mention that the stuff I'm about to talk about are rumors that still hasn't been confirmed by AMD but keep in mind I wouldn't make a video on this if I didn't think that the information was legit but as always but I feel like we need to address this at least. So let's look at the cards and what the rumors are suggesting. Let's start with the RX 5600 which is going up in the sub 200 US dollar and 300 US dollar segment and these cards are going to compete against Nvidia's GTX 16 series and just to remind you the GTX 16 series are the cards that Nvidia's head Jensen Wong didn't want us to buy. He basically said and I'm quoting so buying a graphics card that is going to last 2, 3, 4 years to not have ray tracing is just crazy. I don't know guys, I'll let you be the judge of that statement. I find it kinda rude to call people stupid. Anyway, the RX 5600 goes up against GTX and Touring which includes the 1660, the 1660 Ti and the upcoming 1660 Super which is releasing in October. The RX 567 is based on Navi, of course. We got 7 nanometer, and it's fueled by RDNA. Now RDNA is AMD's new architecture that's proven to be more gaming friendly compared to the older GCN design that they were using in the older Polaris GPUs. Now the RX 5600 is based on Navi 14 which will be a cut down on current RX 5700 or the Navi 10. Now before we go any further, how can we be so sure that Navi 12 and Navi 14 even exist? Actually that is a very good question and I'm glad you asked. So both Navi 12 and Navi 14 and don't worry guys we're gonna touch on Navi 12 in a few moments. Now both of these GPUs have been seen and appeared on GPU databases from time to time and this is usually the place we look for new GPUs and new graphics cards as the first sign of existence. PC manufacturers such as HP also leaks information every once in a while. But if you need even more evidence I actually made a video a few weeks ago covering the fact that Lisa Su which is the head chief at AMD answered a bunch of questions regarding upcoming graphics cards. In this interview she was asked the question about upcoming graphics card where she basically answered that more powerful stuff are on the way this year without giving much more details than that. So the release has to come pretty soon in case AMD hasn't decided to postpone the release, which I do find a bit unlikely. Now to make things even more exciting, it seems like AMD has a complete lineup to replace not just the entry level but also the mid range, which means that the good old Polaris also or perhaps better known as the RX 560, the 570, the 580 as well as the RX 590 are all soon gonna be replaced by brand new Navi graphics cards. Now the few of you that have been reading the news lately, you probably heard about Nvidia's planning on countering AMD by dropping the slightly spiced up 1660 card better known as the 1660 Super. But let's talk about the specifications. How powerful is the 5600 actually going to be? So there has been multiple leaks on these cards and we have seen three actually three different variants including a 3 GB card, 4 GB card and a 8 GB VRAM card. These variants show different performance metrics with the 3 GB variant falling on par with the Radeon RX 570 and the other two outpacing the Polaris cards by a slight margin. These variants were still very early engineering samples and so there's plenty of rooms here for improvements to be seen on the final products. Now other specifications include 1536 Steam processors with 24 CUs and a clock speed up to 1900 MHz. It's also reporting that these cards will be fitted with GDDR6 memory but with a pretty 
this small 128-bit bus. The thing that I find most interesting is the price of course. In order for AMD to be able to replace the older generation, they need to price these new cards somewhat in a similar price range. For example, the RX 570 can be found for around 120 US dollars right now and the RX 580 can be found at 180 US dollars and the RX 590 can be found just under 200 dollars which makes this card for example in my opinion the best budget graphics card available on the market. To make this new card sell, AMD needs to find a very interesting price point for them. One thing that we can say for sure is that Navi 14 will definitely offer higher performance per watt compared to older Polaris CPUs based on the new 7 nanometer architecture. So let's talk about the launch day. So, so the RX 5600 family is expected to release sometimes in October in 2019. So very, very soon. But that's not all. We also got Navi 12 or the RX 5800. So with an estimate of 64 compute units or 4090 16 processors, the RX 5800 is planned on competing with Nvidia's RTX 2080 Super and so as you can imagine it's going to be much more expensive. Now we don't know exactly about pricing for these yet but rumors are suggesting an estimate MSRP of 500 to up to 700 US dollars. Tech Power Up is reporting concerns regarding the memory interface here. It is likely that AMD will stick to the 256-bit GDDR6 memory with the Navi 12 and probably dial-up memory clocks compared to the 1400 gigabit per second speed that the Navi 10 uses. This design choice is influenced by Nvidia's decision on sticking on the 256 bus with its TU-104 silicon. It seems like AMD had enough of the expensive memory solutions such as the HBM2 memory that we know are very very expensive a lot of information here guys i hope this video made somewhat sense obviously i'm going to keep you guys up to date i'm gonna do my absolute best to get a hold of the new navi card and ultimately test some of them out for you guys to help you answer the question if they are worth it or not and that my friends wraps up this video now in case you have any questions you know what to do drop them down below i'm gonna do my best to help you guys out in the meantime watch either of these two videos for more awesome content again thank you so much for watching this video and until next time you guys have an awesome day right